why does sometimes compost do great things for plant production and other times it doesn't do much at all and then other times it actually kills the plant um, and this all comes back down to the fact that people had no clue about biology um, they didn't understand what had to be in a real compost to improve so back in, when i was working on my master's degree we dabbled around with some compost and actually made some compost extracts and some compost teas at the same time and we just killed all the plants so clearly didn't pay attention to the proper things and so we kind of you know from my master's degree we went on to oysters and so when I got to Colorado State University working in soil, um, starting to understand the biology in the soil and starting to see that it was so critically important to differentiate between aerobic conditions and anaerobic conditions. When you're looking at different soils where plants just won't grow, um, they are just barely eking out in existence or where the only thing growing here is weeds, you know, just a field of, oh my gosh, weeds or, you know, cheat grass or something like that. Just really horrific. That soil had only bacteria and it was extremely compacted, possibly even puddling at some time of the year. And you start to finally get a clue that Mother Nature is trying to tell you something here that... When you see these conditions, that, that means only the horrible plants or no plants at all are going to be able to grow. Okay, so now as you start to see fungi coming in, well, what are the conditions now? We're seeing much better plant growth. Well, and then if we now get protozoa and nematodes and microarthropods and you really have all this community of activity going on, then... Um, you're starting to grow some of the most productive ecosystems in the planet, some of the most diverse. And we kept doing these kinds of transects from, you know, the edges of the swamp through up to the old growth forest and seeing that always, always, where we had very poor diversity, where we had only bacteria or bacteria and a few fungi, the successional process was very dependent on what the biology was doing in, t in the soil. So after enough repetition of that, we could actually start doing comparisons of what happens when you improve that biology. So when I did my um, postdoc at the University of Georgia, um, we actually took a two acre uh, farm and split it in half. It had been in conventional agriculture up to that time and so one half of it stayed in conventional agriculture. The other half, we were going to add biology. Okay, so how do you add biology? Where do you get all of these organisms? Where do you grow them? Where do you grow the ones that exist in this habitat? So we made compost. So we really didn't know, again, here we are, we didn't really know what we were doing because nobody had a book out. Nobody had ever written anything that said, really good compost has this much bacteria and this much fungi and this much protozoa and that much. We didn't know for the corn sorghum sorghum um, soybean rotations that we were doing down in Georgia, um, what was the right amount of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and nematodes for corn? And did it differ from soybean? And should it be something else for sorghum? Um, so did we even really have to do a rotation system? Um, did we have to do cover crops in the winter? And how much is all this biology going to change when we started doing these things? So huge research project. But the way we put the biology back into that soil was to add organic matter that had a good number of those organisms. And of course, that was me doing the assessments of all of those organisms in that plant material being put back in. And then, of course, we also wanted to do the experiment, small side projects where we would use antibiotics to kill all of the bacteria. There is no antibiotic on this planet that kills all the bacteria. So we kind of reduce the population some for a very limited period of time. Um, or we used a fungicide to knock the fungi back and used a nematicide to kill the nematodes off. 
so we could at least get some clue for what the role and the function of these microorganisms actually were in soil. So my husband's PhD work at Colorado State University was to use that same methodology. When we're trying to grow wheat, what happens when you have just bacteria in the system? The wheat plant dies within days. It dies because there's no nutrient cycling in that soil. Well, what if you have just fungi? See, fungi are all these wonderful, fungi are so good for, for plants. Now, if all you have are fungi, your plant will die in the course of a couple days. Um, how about if you have fungi and bacteria? Your plant will die. There is no nutrient cycling. So what is it that causes nutrient cycling? Um, why are the bacteria and fungi on the root systems of that plant? Um, so trying to figure all of this out, clearly the something in when you've got a plant, something's feeding the bacteria and fungi because they are having a happy old time growing. But it's not ben benefiting the plant any in these sterile microcosms. There were no diseases in those sterilized microcosms because it was sterile soil where we had put the plant in and then we inoculated bacteria or fungi or protozoa or nematodes or microarthropods. And when you put single organisms in there, plant can't survive. So then we started putting two, the two different groups together. So sorry, the only time we got any plants growing was if we had bacteria and protozoa or if we had bacteria and bacterial feeding nematodes, or we had fungi and fungal feeding nematodes. Only time any of the plants survived and actually made it through to the end of the exper experiment. So what's going on there? The bacteria and fungi will follow the directions of the plant, make the enzymes to pull the nutrients out of the sand, the silt, the clay that we had in that soil, pull it into the bacteria and fungi. The plant never gets any of that if there's no predators in the system. So as soon as we had just a few protozoa, look at all these bacteria, they just go gangbusters and pretty soon we have you know a million protozoa. We have 10 million protozoa per gram of the soil happily eating all of those bacteria, releasing nutrients that are now released in a plant available form. Mm -hmm. And right at first we were just totally concentrated on nitrogen um, and we, my husband's PhD work shows the increase in the amount of protein in the plus biology versus where we didn't have biology. And it, just night and day differences. Now when you get bacteria and fungi with all of their predators, you know, that's where you get the best plant growth. So huge discovery. Ecological monograph was written and it was just, it's been one of the most important papers in the world of soil biology ecology because finally we started to understand how important microorganisms are, all that life in the soil for making your plants grow. Now, you know, and then we started working again, the, the information on the balances of the bacteria and fungi, protozoa and nematodes came in. We realized that in systems where we have horrible diseases that can be in there, that if you don't have the right biology around those root systems, then the root systems are open to the diseases and pests coming in. As soon as we get those root systems inoculated by all the good guy organisms, no disease, no pests. And then we started working on weeds, um, showing that if we get this diversity of microorganisms in to the soil, weeds are not capable of competing. They can't win in competition with any other higher plant. So the weeds are not part of that ecosystem. Stop having to till. Organic farmers, stop tilling. But you better get the biology in that soil first. Because if you don't have these sets of organisms to select for your crop species and for the understory plants you probably want to have in that system, then, okay, you're going right back to the weed system and you're going to have to till you the living daylights out of it. But organic people who can't get off the tillage, they will never get out of the trap of having overwhelming weed problems. So how do you get off of that trap? you got to get the biology back into the soil. <laughs>